Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Aditya Gupta. Welcome back to the NCRDBS Human Physiology. Uh, this time we'll be doing respiration and uh, in this video we'll be discussing mechanism of respiration. So mechanism of respiration is not that tough. It's very easy to understand. We all remember from chemistry, pressure is universally related to volume. You know, when the pressure increases, the volume decreases and when the volume increases, the pressure will decrease. This is a simple uh, concept that you have to remember as far as your inspiration or expiration is concerned. So during inspiration, we want the air to get inside the lungs and lungs to expand with air. And when lungs will expand with air, what will happen? Uh, the volume will increase. But can the lungs expand on their own? No. Lungs by themselves do not have an expanding capacity, but lungs are situated inside the thoracic cavity. And this thoracic cavity is an airtight chamber. So if anything happens to the thoracic cavity, the lungs will have a similar change in that uh, area. So what happens is we are able to modify our thoracic cavity and which in turn results in modification of the volume or the pressure inside the lung. So during inspiration, what simply we have to do is that uh, we have to decrease the pressure inside the lungs to lower than that of uh, atmosphere. So that from high pressure, the blood uh, air will flow to the low pressure area. In order to decrease the pressure of lungs inside the lungs, we have to increase the volume of the lungs. And how do we increase the volume of the lungs? By inspiring. So the chest cavity will expand. And how does this chest cavity expand? With the help of two muscles. One is diaphragm. The second is between ribs, there is something called as intercostal muscles. There is external intercostal, there is internal intercostal. Both intercostals along with diaphragm, they will help in increasing the volume of the thoracic cavity. When the volume of the thoracic cavity will increase, the pressure inside the lungs will decrease. The pressure will become less than that of atmosphere. So inside lung, the pressure will become less than that of atmosphere. And air will then directly flow from high pressure zone to low pressure zone and the air will be sucked inside the lung. Expiration is exactly opposite. Usi same at the same point of time, expiration is opposite. These muscles which contracted, diaphragm contracted, the intercostal contracted, they will relax and the air will be thrown out. Because the volume will decrease, the pressure will increase, the pressure in the lung will increase more than that of atmosphere. So air will flow from lungs to the atmosphere outside. Okay, so how does this happen? Suppose this is a lung. Uh, I'm sorry for my uh, not extraordinary drawing, but let's assume this is the lung. So this part is the lung and we are surrounded by ribs. And Nietzsche just separating our abdomen and our thoracic cavity is the diaphragm. Diaphragm will contract and ribs will contract and when the ribs so intercostal muscles will contract and when the intercostal muscles will contract the ribs will expand and diaphragm contracting will get it down right this diaphragmatic contraction i'm so sorry this diaphragmatic contraction will result in an increase in volume in the anterior to posterior direction so the front of the body and the back is called the posterior basically so face aage ki upar the upper part is the anterior and lower down will be posterior and the the front this front is called ventral and this back is called dorsal that's why it's called dorsal vertebra also the intercostal vert, uh, intercostal muscle will result in expansion the volume expansion along the which axis ventro dorsal axis this can be asked this definitely can be asked diaphragm results in increase in volume along the anterior posterior axis which axis diaphragm results in increase in volume across the anterior and posterior axis while intercostal results in dorso ventral axis okay and expiration is exactly the reverse there is these contracted muscles relax it is a passive process now at the same point of time i'll ask uh, tell you something that there are other muscles that can be involved remember when you are running when you are running you tend to inspire much more you have to improve your capacity to uh, so because you are running, you are uh, using much, much more energy. So just the diaphragm and the intercostal muscles don't suffice. At that point of time, even the abdominal muscles play a role in increasing your lung capacity. But they do not, they are not utilized during normal respiration, only during exercise and when you want to increase the capacity are they utilized. So this also can be asked. So just uh, quickly recapitulating what we have learned. So pressure is inversely related to volume. We want the pressure inside the lung to go down less than that, at, that of atmosphere. When this negative pressure is there, the air will be sucked inside the lung. And how do we decrease the pressure? We increase the volume. How do we increase the volume? Two muscles, intercostals and diaphragm. Diaphragm goes down, increases the volume in the which axis? 
anterior to posterior axis the intercostal increase in which axis the dorsal ventral axis and if, if you want to increase it further we'll use abdominal muscle now let's read what ncrt has to say so breathing involves two stages fair enough inspiration during which the atmospheric air is drawn in inspire expire when the alveolar, alveolar air is released out the movement of air in and out of lung is carried out by creating a pressure gradient so it is it is not done directly it is done by creating a pressure gradient the pressure should be lower inside the lungs in order for the air to suck in from a high pressure gradient to a low pressure gradient the air should go inspiration can occur if the pressure within the lungs and this pressure is called intrapulmonary pressure this intrapulmonary pressure is less than the atmospheric pressure so the atmospheric pressure should be the atmospheric pressure should be more than lung pressure this lung pressure is called as intrapulmonary pressure that is there is a negative pressure in the lung with respect to the atmospheric pressure and similarly expiration will take place when the lung temperature so this is valid as far as inspiration is concerned and this is valid lung pressure being more than atmosphere pressure as far as expiration is concerned okay so there are two sets of muscle the diaphragm and a specialized set of muscles called the external and the internal costals which are present between the ribs which help in generation of such gradients so which muscles are involved in as far as respiration is concerned diaphragm and intercostal which is both internal and external intercostal okay now inspiration is initiated by contraction of diaphragm so in so this this is a very the see this that's how they will frame question how is inspiration initiated contraction of which muscle diaphragm not intercostal inspiration is initiated by contraction of diaphragm which increases the volume of the thoracic chamber in which that axis anterior posterior axis like i told you so diaphragm will increase in the anterior posterior axis diaphragm will go down and anterior is above and now it's posterior so anterior posterior axis uh diaphragm will increase the volume similarly the contraction of the external intercostal muscle lifts the ribs up causing an increase in the volume of thoracic chamber in the dorso ventral axis so there are two axes that you have to remember the anterior posterior and the dorso ventral the anterior posterior increase will be done by diaphragm and this dorso ventral will be done with the help of external which is uh, intercostal external intercostal external intercostal the overall increase in thoracic volume vol volume will increase pressure will decrease an increase in pulmonary volume results in intrapulmonary pressure to decrease and atmospheric pressure to become more than that of the intrapulmonary pressure which forces the air from outside to move into the lung that is inspiration and this relaxation will return it to normal position and cause expiration so relaxation in the diaphragm and intercostal muscle returns the diaphragm to the normal position and reduce the pulmonary volume and thoracic volume this decreasing volume increasing pressure this increase this leads to an increase in intrapulmonary pressure to just above the atmospheric pressure causing expulsion that is expiration and now ncrt is telling us that we have the ability to increase the strength of inspiration and expiration with the help of muscles in the abdomen abdominal muscles how many times do we breathe normal breathing rate is 12 to 16 can again be asked the volume of air involved in breathing movement it can be estimated using a something called as spirometer in the next video i'll show you uh, so this uh, reminds me i'll get you actual readings of a spirometer that is present in a pediatrics ward which we regularly use in order to diagnose people who have pulmonary function problem so spirometer which instrument is used spirometer is used in clinical assessment of pulmonary function so they can ask you which of the following instruments is used in an assessment of clinical function and the answer would be spirometer tomorrow i'll give you an actual graph and how an actual photo of spirometer in the next video i'll definitely do that okay so this is as far as your uh, mechanism of breathing is concerned let's look at the diagram ncrt also gives air is entering lung this is inspiration diaphragm is contracted rib cage and sternum rib cage and sternum so they can simply you know they can make this they make this blank and ask you which bone is being talked about the answer would be sternum volume of thorax increases pressure decreases air enters lung similarly volume of thorax decreases they can they can make this guy up they can make this fill in the blank the volume of the thorax during inspiration increases pressure decreases intrapulmonary pressure becomes negative with respect to the atmospheric pressure and air is finally sucked in ribs and sternum return to the original or original position this is as far as the 
expiration is concerned so this concludes the you know a video for today and i'll come back with further videos and we'll definitely revise um the human physiology before your exams so thank you and have a nice day